Okay, good Monday evening, everybody. David Paul with you in the KHOU 11 Weather Center. This is your Monday evening tropical Atlantic update for September the 20th. We've got uh, Tropical Storm Peter, Tropical Storm Rose, and Invest 98L. Of the three, 98L looks the most interesting. Uh, Peter may end up impacting Bermuda, though, so heads up, folks, in Bermuda. And then Rose is interesting. Rose, this is the first time we've ever used the name Rose. Rose goes back to the original uh, 1979 list of names. And Rose is our, let's see, we're 14, 15, 17 named storms now. Six hurricanes, three of the major, Ida, Larry, and Grace. So... 14, 15, 16, 17 named storms. Where does that put us here for the season? Well, we were forecasting 18, we've had 17. An average season is 14, so we've got 17 named storms there. We're ahead of average. We've had a total of six hurricanes, one below average. We've had three majors right on the button for an average season, but remember, we still have almost half the season to go. And especially as we get into the middle of October, we can have a secondary peak in activity. So we're far from over with our, our names usage. Here's the way it looks in the Atlantic Basin tonight. Uh, we've got Peter Tropical Storm. That one may impact Bermuda. We've got Rose. This one looks like it's destined for the open Atlantic and a fish storm. Here's 98L. That one's interesting. And then up here, oh, several hundred miles uh, east southeast of St. John's Newfoundland, we've got an area that has a 30% chance for development. This just does not look very healthy. And what's up here is being sheared quite heavily by the upper level winds. So this one really is on the back burner. Models are not overly aggressive with picking up anything. If anything, this may end up being a system that ends up giving the North Sea and Great Britain a pretty stormy day in about a week's time. So let's start with Peter. This is Tropical Storm Peter. Looks like impacts to San Juan, Puerto Rico, and the U.S. Uh, Virgin Islands will be minimal, and that has a lot to do with the wind shear. And as you look at this latest display, can you see what's kind of off about this? So here's the center of our storm, Peter, and all the convection is off to the east and northeast. So we've looked at this several times this year. Th this is a sheared storm. And in fact, if you look at the visible, and this is a 12-hour loop of the visible, it goes into darkness as the sun goes down. But you can see it. Watch it go one more time. There's the center. It's an exposed center, an exposed swirl. When you get a system like that where the center is exposed from all the deep convection, which you can see is all offset to the north and east side, that's a system that just is not developing. You've got to get that convection over the center of circulation to get pressures to drop, to get more energy into the system, for it to strengthen and, uh, it, and see the winds increase as the pressure drops. And we're just not seeing that with Tropical Storm Peter. Winds are sustained at 50, moving west-northwest at 14. And it's interesting. So the upper level winds are not only tearing it apart, but they're going to play a big role in steering Peter. You can see it's getting sheared from the south from a ridge of high pressure off to the east, big clockwise flow around that area of high pressure. And so here it comes up from the south and we're getting that southerly shear that has been ripping it apart for the past 24 hours. But now it's interacting with this shear out of the southwest. That's an upper level low uh, sitting off to its north and west. And those are the two components that are you can clearly see shearing all the thunderstorms. They're basically tipping the storm over. They're ripping the head off the storm and exposing the center. This upper level low is going to be retrograding back to the west, west-southwest over the next 24, 36, 48 hours. And as it does so, it's going to help to steer Peter to the north. So with a low in this position, upper level winds around that, you can see how this is going to help to pull what there is of Peter to the north. And here's Bermuda. So this is all pointing at a Bermuda impact, although the impacts for Bermuda may be minimal as tropical systems go, because it is forecast to be a minimal tropical storm, if that, as it turns to the north as we head into Thursday and Friday, and then going into Saturday, there's St. George, Bermuda. Here's the center, perhaps the center of a minimal tropical storm. And a lot of models also, we get this down to just a tropical depression by the time it is impacting Bermuda. So it looks like a minimal tropical impact for Bermuda as we head into the coming weekend. Let's take a look at some of the other spaghetti plots. They're all basically in agreement that this is going to be turned to the north by that upper low we talked about, upper level winds steering it off to the north before it can impact. 
the east coast of the United States. So this will be no threat to the east coast of the U.S. But Bermuda, yeah, you may get some wind and rain out of this one. And as we look at the GFS and the Euro, combined with the National Hurricane Center forecast, they very much line up as we head into Wednesday evening, as it's beginning to make that turn to the north. And then as we head into Friday, Saturday, solutions begin to spread out a little bit. And I think that has a lot to do with this will be a very sheared system. Remember that upper level low out here will continue to shear those upper level winds. The thing may be falling apart as it gets close to Bermuda. Remember how the, the forecast cone look with that big bubble out front? Well, that's including the GFS and the Euro and the, on the outer fringe of possibilities of that. And here's the official hurricane forecast. So for Bermuda going into this weekend, you're going to see some wind and rain, it looks most likely. But again, a minimal tropical impact as tropical impacts go by Bermuda standards. You've been hit by some big ones. OK, big picture and out to the west coast of Africa we go. Two spots out here. This is Rose, Tropical Storm Rose. This is 98L, which is looking much more healthy this, af this afternoon and this evening. Let's start with Rose, who is, you know, in a good spot. The upper level winds are, are not tearing this one apart. And it was interesting over the weekend we were taking a look at this and just kind of being like, why is this one not exploding into a hurricane? And there is an answer to that. And that is because it is trying to develop in an area where there's quite a bit of Saharan dust. When these last couple of waves came out the west coast of Africa, they kicked up a whole new round of dust. So as this is trying to strengthen, it's ingesting this arid layer, the Saharan air layer, which is dry air. Tropical storms need moisture. It's sinking air. Tropical systems need lift. So it's two things that will stop any type of significant development. So the dry air from the Saharan air layer is being ingested into rows and that's just choking off any significant development. And as you look at the forecast from the Hurricane Center, they weaken it down to a depression as we head into Thursday, Friday and Saturday and keep it well over the open Atlantic as a dying system going into the weekend. Now 98L, you know, it's got that little tumbling look to it. It looks like it's getting better organized. Computers the past couple of days have been kind of off and on, off and on picking up on this system. But they do pick up on it now, and in fact, they do develop this into a tropical storm, maybe even a hurricane, at least the latest runs do, as it heads to the west, then west-northwest. You can see a lot of these models initiate away from where the Hurricane Center has its center of circulation. That's because the real center hasn't formed yet. We don't have a depression yet, so there's a lot of uncertainty in these spaghetti plots. But even with that uncertainty, there's a general consensus that it will turn west and a little bit north of west over the coming days. Watch right here. GFS and the Euro both, as we head into Friday, cut off a tropical depression, maybe a tropical storm. SAM is the next name on the list. And then they strengthen it. Notice how the isobars really begin to stack up. That's an indication of a strengthening tropical system. The GFS slows it down, begins to turn it to the north quicker than the Euro, but the Euro does have a little bit of a northwesterly component to it. So that's going into Monday. So where is this one going to end up going? And, you know, you get this far out in the forecast period and you get a lot more uncertainty in, in the eventual track. But when we look at the big picture, the, the North, uh, North America across the globe, what we see are these troughs that are becoming more frequent and deeper, uh, much more, uh, much more uh, highly amplified. So what that means is we're heading into fall. And of course, the fall equinox is on Wednesday. And, uh, and that is going to, you know, that marks the beginning of the change of seasons. And the jet stream is certainly acting like we are changing seasons. And when you start getting more of these troughs, what these do is they pick up these storms and pull them north. And quite often these troughs will save the east coast of the, of the United States this time of year from getting hit by a big hurricane. We go into Thursday. You know, still kind of troughy out here. That might turn stuff to the north. Here's another significant trough coming into the east coast. That would pull anything out there up to the north and curve it north, northeast. We go into Sunday, another trough. Well, this one exits. We go into Monday, Tuesday. And, you know, the main jet stream trough is up here to the north, but even part of it is dipping down in here. There is a trough, it's a weak one, but that would be enough to probably begin to pull whatever's forming out here to the northwest and eventually north, northeast into the cold Atlantic before it has a chance to hit the east coast. So just looking at the big picture, 
you know, this far out in the future, going into next Tuesday, Wednesday, more than a week out, you know, 10 days out, you, you've got some increased uncertainty, but the big picture suggests that what's out over the open Atlantic is most likely to stay out there. We go into Thursday, that's 10 days out. There's another significant trough. There's a portion of it dipping down all the way into the Caribbean. So that really would have a major influence on wanting to pull whatever forms out here to the north and hopefully keep it off the east coast and out of the Caribbean and out of the Gulf of Mexico. And this also you know, suggests that we're getting these significant troughs. That's a cold front coming in next week. Another one, we've got a front coming across the country tonight, which will cool everybody off as we head into Tuesday and Wednesday. That's nice. Questions, comments, hit me up on social. We'll see you uh, tomorrow for another update.